Parallels 20 just landed and there's a bunch of new features, especially if you're a developer. Because that's what I've been that's what I've been using it for the last few years. I talked before about how convenient it is to carry just one machine instead of several machines for development. My daily driver is the M2 Max MacBook Pro and Apple makes pretty good hardware. You can't argue with that. And the hardware performs. It performs so well that in my test that I've shown previously on this channel, you can start up Windows and you can start up programs like Visual Studio here faster than on dedicated PC machines. So you not only get speed, but you get a development environment environment on a Mac, on Windows, and Linux all on one machine that you can carry with you, which means you can develop .NET applications with Visual Studio, you can develop web applications, you can develop iOS applications because you're running and building on a Mac, Android applications, cross-platform, uh, you get the picture. I have macOS Sonoma as my main OS on my Mac, and I've installed macOS Sequoia as a virtual machine inside of that. So it's especially good if you're gonna be testing and running applications on these different scenarios. Before you wanna commit your entire system to running a beta version of the newest operating system that you don't know if it's gonna crash your machine or not, create it on a virtual machine. Some of these things we've already known for years and that's why I've been using this for years. But there are a few new things I'm about to show you and there's also a few new things coming along that I'm hearing rumors about. Now I'm not 100% sure when it's coming, but it's coming very soon. Mac OS Sequoia supports nested virtualization. And if the rumors are true, then we might be able to get WSL2 inside Windows in a virtual machine soon. As you know, WSL1 allows you to run Linux inside a Windows environment, really helpful for certain use cases, but WSL2 requires a virtual machine to be run inside Windows in a virtual machine. Ah, oh, my head is gonna explode. But if you have nested virtualization, that's exactly what's gonna happen. WSL2 is gonna be able to work on Windows, but hopefully that's coming soon. Stay tuned on this channel. I will definitely be using that as soon as it comes out. And Parallels has been working really hard to do really good integration with the underlying host so for example, AI is really big now and Sequoia is gonna have a few AI features and Parallels allows you to tap into that and use the AI powered writing tools inside your Windows apps. You can even use sign in with Apple ID within the Mac OS virtual machine. And that's been a pretty long awaited feature. Now I don't use Mac OS Guest that much. I mostly use Windows and Linux. Windows I use for .NET development because I like the Visual Studio environment. I know, I know you're all gonna leave a comment saying you can do all the .NET stuff and VS code now, but come on, come on, let's get serious. It's not the same. Nothing quite matches Visual Studio proper development environment for .NET development. You can say Visual Studio is slow if you're running it on a slow machine, but Visual Studio is not slow if you're running it on a fast machine. Yeah, it's a big product, okay? Sometimes you need to use tools that are large and heavy to do a big job. Somebody recently left a comment saying, Visual Studio is so bulky, I don't wanna use it, I'm just gonna uninstall it. Well, yeah, you can also build a house with just a hammer if you really like pain. But if you wanna finish that house quicker, you're gonna bring a table saw, you're gonna bring a crew, and you're gonna bring a cement truck. All right, I think I made my point here. Let's talk about some of those new dev tools. There's a Parallels extension for VS Code, which I run on my Mac, and this extension has recently been updated. First of all, there is the My Virtual Machines section, which shows the virtual machines that I have installed. Here you can do management, like taking snapshots of your machines, creating virtual machines, adding a group. This makes it pretty easy to create a new VM. Pick Windows, what version you want, give it a name, point it to an ISO file if you want to, how many CPUs you want it to have, how much memory you want it to have, and you can have add-ons. What do you want that virtual machine to have already pre-installed? Docker, Git. These are things that you need to actually set up. When you install a clean version of Windows, you need to go through and install these. First you debloat Windows, and then you install the tools you need. Flutter, uh, Visual Studio is included here, although this is Visual Studio 2019, kind of old, so I would probably install Visual Studio 2022 from the website, which is free by the way, VS Code, and so on. And you can set up a default user here, which is pretty convenient. Now usually I still create my machines from the Parallels Desktop Control Center, which is a lot easier in my opinion. It's just a one-click installation, and Microsoft considers Parallels to be the only official source for virtualized machines for running Windows virtual on client machines like this. I've shown detailed steps on this before on the channel. It's pretty easy. I'll link a video down below showing exactly how to do this. This is where you
you can also do Mac OS. This is where you can do Linux and Linux with Rosetta pre-configured. If you want to run your x86 programs within Linux, you can do that as well here. So that's Windows. And those are two ways you can create virtual machines. And there's another way, a new one. And that's how I created this AI development package. Let's talk about that for a second. I'm going to close up virtual machines and you'll see that there's a parallels catalog and there is a my catalogs here inside parallels catalog will be um, options of pre-configured packages, pre-configured images of virtual machines. One of the ones they have right now is the AI development package. So you can create a virtual machine right from here by clicking this button. I already did that and it creates a virtual machine for you and pre-installs and pre-configures an AI workspace. What is an AI workspace, right? <laughs> well, they have a separate page for that. AI is so hot right now that a lot of us want to learn. We're developers, but not all developers are machine learning developers, right? There's a ton of different developers out there, but because it's so interesting and such a hot field, some of us kind of want to dabble with AI, but we don't know where to begin or how to configure the environment. So this package basically configures the environment for you. It's a Linux environment. Environment, and it comes with this prepackaged tool sets, Olama, Open Web UI. Both of those I've covered in tutorials on the channel. I'll link to those down below too. Docker, NumPy, uh, TorchVision, FFmpeg, Pandas, Torch, TensorFlow, OpenCV, all these other things that I am ashamed to say I don't really know. But I've, I know some of them, okay? I know some of them. Hey, there's a lot of things to learn out there. So this is the package that I just clicked one button, it installed it, and now I'm running Linux with all the AI tools installed. I can do a chatbot with a Llama 3.1. And there it is, it's running locally on my virtual machine. Hi. Oh, I need to select a model. Llama 3.1 latest. Hi. And there we go. Since this is all pre-configured on this machine, you can go and see how it's configured as a learning opportunity. Now, one thing I want to mention is that while this is going to run on a Mac with eight gigabytes, I've shown this before, I would highly suggest you don't do that. Okay. Get at least 16 gigabytes. 32 is my recommendation to be safe because every time you create a virtual machine and here I have four, it needs resources. For example, this Windows machine that's running has eight processors allocated to it and four gigabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of RAM in 2024. What? Yeah, yeah, you you can have four gigabytes of RAM on Windows and it still runs fine. Look at this. I got uh, Visual Studio open. I got Chrome open. I got the terminal open. I got VS Code open. It works, folks. You can allocate more RAM to it if you want to. Let's take this other virtual machine I have here, which is also a Windows one. It's just a different version of Windows, which is kind of nice. I can have multiple different versions of Windows, but here I turned it off and now I can go and change the CPU, the GPU. It can do auto or I can assign 10 processor cores to it and 54 gigabytes of RAM. Depends on your workload, right? What are you running on your Windows machine? What are you running on your Linux machine? You wanna be able to allocate the memory that you need for those workflows. They've also added the Parallels DevOps service, which I have not yet played around with, but you can automate the deployment and management of virtual machines directly from your GitHub repository triggering VM provisioning, testing, and configuration automatically as part of your GitHub Actions pipeline. Something I didn't get into and test yet because that's kind of outside my workflow. But if you're interested in a video about that to dig deeper into that, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see what I can do. If you already have Parallels 19, this is a worthy upgrade. If you don't have Parallels yet and you haven't tried it yet, you can try it for free. There's a link down below. And if you want to purchase it, there's a coupon code too. This is an affiliate link and it helps the channel out if you use my link specifically. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. And if you want to see the performance of me comparing virtual environment with a native environment, you can check it out in a video right over here. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.